Welcome to the Morning Coffee Show. I'm Prince Hakeem. I'm Amanda Love. And today we have a great topic for y'all. Before we get into it, make sure you do me a huge favor and like and share uh, our YouTube channel right here at the bottom. We appreciate all that as well. Go follow us on social media at the Morning Coffee Show or Instagram at Morning Coffee or on Facebook. Uh, but today's topic is about beauty standards. What is beautiful to you? Uh, listen, I didn't come up with this topic. Amanda did. But I think it's a great topic because it's a topic of conversation I had many times with so many people. And I think it's a good topic to continue having or a conversation to continue having with your friends and family because I think we need to break some of these standards that we have out there and what we expect out of people when it comes to beauty. So uh, and no further ado, let's jump into it. So have you ever heard somebody tell somebody that you're beautiful or you're handsome for, for a blank? So it can be like a dark skinned person, a light skinned person, Spanish person, an Asian person. Or light skin is in. Or light skin is in. I've heard that one. Now I'm guilty. I was trying to bring light skin back like a couple years ago. So all by myself. Um, but this is like jokes between me and friends. But I hear people say that and they're dead serious. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they get into like, wow, you are so pretty for, you know, a dark skinned girl. And I'm like, I hear people tell, tell people that or say that to somebody. I'm like, yo, that is the rudest thing ever. Like, why would you say that to somebody? But it's because of what people expect beauty should look like, right? Yeah. And it's like what you're taught. Like, I'm sure the person that says that to somebody doesn't have the idea that they're insulting another human being by saying it. Because they feel like they're giving a compliment, right? They, they look at you and go, oh, you're pretty for whatever. And why can't you just be pretty? Right. But I guess certain people are not considered pretty. I even heard that you're handsome for a, a, a I won't say fat, but a healthy guy. A husky. A husky guy. Husky. You're 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 pretty for a big chick. I have yes. You know, and I I'm like that. that is so insulting. Did you want the person to say, "Oh, thank you. Can I have another, please?" Because that was amazing. It made me feel great about myself. Mm -hmm. I don't, I never said that about anybody. I never said that to anybody. I don't think that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think beauty is beauty, but. I think the society that we live in, we talk about beauty as if it's one standard. And normally it'll be the blonde, blue eyed, tall, dark, handsome, muscular, thin, fit type of person. And that's what we see in like magazines, TV shows, movies. And so they push this down our throat a lot and they say, but this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then what's, what magazine is that? That they do the top beautiful people of the world or whatever, oh, like the top like ten. Cosmos. Oh, like time. Yeah, the most One beautiful those, person. Like, in yeah, the, okay. You know, for 2019, like they had. Uh, um, was it? Was oh, it, people. It's people. The people. Was it people? Okay. That right there, I think, is one of the <clears throat> problems we have. Who decides who the, these are the be most beautiful people in the world? Like, who decides this? Because if it's one group of people, that is so biased. Because mm -hmm. beauty to me may not be beautiful. may not be beautiful beautiful to you, um, and I'm the consumer of that product. So I'm like, oh, yeah, hey, but I haven't seen better. Matter of fact, the girl the block looks better than that. Well, and that's that's kind of why I like brought it up because as we were talking about topics and trying to figure out what we were going to talk about, um, of course, you know me and the research studies. Mm -hmm. So I started to go through. Um, a couple of different studies I found about beauty and I just found them interesting because um, we talk about so much like this person is beautiful or famous people that are beautiful that we like automatically culturally like we look at somebody like Beyonce or Naomi Campbell or Tyra Banks when we're talking about models or um, actresses or performers entertainers people that are famous that you know have this like across bounds this person is beautiful um, and the idea of what makes that person beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I started to look up different things of how, how that kind of begins for us. You know, at, as children, everything is in some sort of like developmental stage. Mm -hmm. And we develop this idea of what we find, at that point we don't know that it's beauty, but what we find attractive. Mm -hmm. um, 
what comes natural and comfortable to us mm -hmm. and so in the study it was talking about things that come naturally that bring comfort so when we look at somebody seeing something that's symmetrical and that simply means the simplicity of somebody's face like both sides of our face are even you know our eyes both are in you know right next to each other our eyebrows are the same shape and size mm -hmm. you know not that everything is perfect but that it sits as close to perfect as possible on your face yeah um because then you know as i went on reading i was thinking about things that we tend to find i don't i don't even want to say ugly mm -hmm. but things that we point out as an issue things like scars or pimples or you know if I had a scar across one side of my face you'd be like look at that and mm -hmm. it's like extremely noticeable um, so it went through a couple of different cultural trends um, and things that people that different cultures find beautiful um, and it talked a lot about symmetry it talked about um, defects being a sort of turn off it talked about skin color um, and I could see how that would be it, it's based on like the um, familiarity that's associated with the culture that if I'm raised in African culture where everyone is very dark skinned someone who's very light skinned could be one or the other it could be something that I find beautiful because I find it interesting and new if you have white skin yeah or it could be something that I find very comforting because it looks familiar if you have dark skin yeah um so it kind of went through those different scenarios and how people end up developing um a preference for different things and it even went into um a lot about our development of um safety mm. you know associating our thoughts and our emotions with people that have been familiar to us that like our parents or you know how people say like oh if it it looks like her dad she a little girl like will find somebody that looks like her father or her brother very attractive and she'll like stare at him because that person is safe or that person is someone who looks familiar to her so it was interesting to read about people who found something totally opposite from them mm -hmm. um attractive and it was mostly because a lot of the people that were interviewed in that study were either people who were like complete rebels mm -hmm. in their family so they were the kid who like did the exact opposite and like okay so if i'm a white girl and i wasn't allowed to date black guys well that's where i'm going um, and it was a curiosity of why. Yeah. So it was based on experience or the extreme lack of. Yeah. Um, and that's what became interesting. Therefore, it was beautiful. So it was interesting to see all the different dynamics of how those things play into how people identify beauty. But then there's the normal, like you were talking about, the cultural things of just different things that we identify as beautiful across the board things like doing hair or doing makeup or nails or nail polish or the way we dress or different trends or you know things like that that we feel like is necessary to be identified as attractive right i hate this term we talked about this before you hear someone that says oh you're so exotic like what what is that like a plant's exotic an animal an animal is a, a place like a a destination can be exotic, but when you say that to a person, um, it feels different. You know, mm -hmm. you're like you're looking at me as if I'm in a zoo. Or um, you separate. I I feel like that separates people from people. Right. You know what I mean? Like if I look at you and I go, Oh my God, you look so exotic. It's like, where are you, where are you trying to say I'm from? What are you trying to say I am? And a a a beast. <laughs> so exotic look at your hair like what do you what does that mean so for those people people who are using that particular term stop it it's not what you think and for those people that don't think there's anything wrong with it it's like i'm okay people call me exotic all the time i am exotic you know i'm in the model world so that's a thing for me like no that's not okay you're not don't an animal that. or a destination or a relic they found in a tomb 
Like, you, you are a person, like, you know? It just doesn't sound appropriate for a human being. At all. It doesn't. And I, I think that people find specific attributes and they like start picking stuff out. And it does make you feel like, I mean, I've had even people walk up to me like, oh, your hair. And they like reach out and touch me like I'm a pet. Like without asking permission, without, oh, you have such nice hair. And the next thing I know I'm being groomed, like petted. <laughs> one of these motions in the grocery store and you're like part of, I only can imagine that you want to punch them well I, I I usually just because I'm a I'm a talker and a communicator so I, I sometimes I want to turn around and be like <laughs> you who who like where did you learn that it was okay to just like touch people touch people and then and then make comments about like what they look like yeah and think it's okay to like oh this is so nice you know it, it makes me feel weird when people touch me anyway only because i don't I, if i don't know you i don't want you to touch me mm -hmm. but hands freak me out a little bit because you do a lot of stuff with hands go to the bathroom some people wash their hands some people don't are you a germaphobe i'm not a germaphobe i just don't touch me if i don't know you Okay. You know what I'm saying? If, unless I reach out to shake your hand, but if you walk up to me and say, oh, let me see your beard, and you touch my face, what comes next is on you. They just think it's, you know, it's fake, so they want to touch your beard, but it's, I know you, it's fine. I know you want your hands. <laughs> oh um, yeah, I'm not like that. I'm not a freak when it comes to that stuff, but I just, if I don't know you and you go to touch my face or touch my hair, and like, wait a minute. This is getting out of hand. And I think it goes along with that thing where people get intrigued and they think it's beautiful. Like your hair, oh, it's so beautiful. Let me touch your hair. That doesn't make it okay though. But if, what if I say, hey, your booty's beautiful and I reach out and touch your booty? That's not okay. Would you be okay with that? Like it's the same way when you think about, I touched you in a place. Like you touch me in a place. It could be my face. If I touch you on your, on your butt, you're like, oh, that's sexual assault. But that's not sexual assault by touching my face. I don't, I don't know you. I thought your face was beautiful. Well, I thought your butt was beautiful. You, you're welcome. And there you go. I don't know why I make that sound, but you know what I mean. But I think when it comes to beauty, I think it's all based on, to your point, how you learn what beauty looks like. With that being said, the surgeries that is going on in this country and outside this country is making tons of money based off of what beauty standards are. And so imagine going into a doctor's office and you're already uncomfortable about something that you don't like about yourself because you have this vision of beauty based off the things you've seen all your life. You walk in, I don't like this. They point out five other things that they think you could do better on, right? With your body. I'm here to tell you, God doesn't make any mistakes. Do you need a little help over time because of gravity? Possibly. If you want things to sit up a little bit higher and wrinkles go back a little bit further, fine. But understand, God has, has not made any mistakes. Plastic surgery was originally designed for people that had like accidents, soldiers that went to war, those type of things. But then when people say, hey, stick some of this, uh, I mean, have just you, fix have a flat you, in my butt. Have you watched Bosch? I have, and it's the, it's the it's craziest like, thing. It's almost scary. But you know, people go and do things like go to these hotel rooms to get, like I said, fix a flat, like, pumped in a butt with concrete. Like in butt, butt injection, it's the lip craziest things. I even like people are getting. Oh, the the greatest ones are like the muscle implants in different places in your body, so it could look like you have muscles that you don't have, or you know you're getting implants yeah. in your butt or your calf muscles or your thigh muscles, or yeah. I even saw one with a guy who was putting like implants in his back, and they. Um, were like misshaped or something like that. So he has this like random square thing in the side of his back. And there's nothing you can do about that unless you like keep cutting yourself up, keep taking it out, keep putting it back in. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that we think like every person resorts to plastic surgery. Right. Um, but it's just to give a general idea of people are beautiful the way they are. Um, yeah. There are so many things out there that you know, now you have like the Instagram models and the, you know, there are so many things out there that 
give an impression of what you should be looking like and i mean we know you could do a lot of things with a picture oh yeah if you look i will see thousands of dollars this is new app you can download on your phone they can make you old they can make you young you can change the color and just stay online all jokes aside that can be dangerous if you're not going to an actual surgeon. And that's the point I want to make up. I want to bring up is that don't go out here and getting these side jobs done because people are dying, getting infections, and are end up worse than what they were when they went in because they are looking at what beauty standards are. Um, granted, we all feel like we can do some things a little bit different. We feel, hey, if I can get this lifted a little bit, this tucked a little bit, this blown up, whatever, that's fine. Go and see an actual person. She can go back and say, hey, it didn't work. You know, yeah. not only do I want my money back, I want you to fix it, I want to see you. Like, you can't do that on the roadside hotel. It won't work. That person's gone. I was like, going to say, you won't ever find that guy again. Oh, yeah. I was watching this um, video, I think it was a Vlad video, and the lady. She was um, known for giving butt injections to like Matt. She's one of the first people um, that known people to actually mm -hmm. do it. I think she said she did Nicki Minaj's um, before Nicki became, became big. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but she talked about how people would come in, she had clients, it was like a rotating door, and she was just pumping them full of like these chemicals. Mm -hmm. She wasn't a certified doctor or nurse, she was nowhere in the medical field. Someone else that she knew taught her how to do it. When he got locked up, she took over and she made millions of dollars by this sideshow type of operation. And it's kind of scary to hear it that is. people are doing this stuff and people paying and going to get themselves injected with something. You have no idea what this is. When you're doing surgery, you want to be in a sterile place, a place that have clean utensils, I mean utensils, clean uh, tools, they have clean, Probably put into you. You don't. You know where it's coming from, versus the places that you're going mm -hmm. to that don't know. They don't even know where they get it from. It is. They fell for truck. You know, that's like lack of a better word, but it's not a reputable place where it's coming from. So, with that being said, we were talking about like physical characteristics of being beautiful, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I'm like. At this point in my life, as I meet people and as I form relationship with friends, guys, whatever, dating, um, I have found in my experience that some people that I care about become more attractive over time mm -hmm. based on who they are as a human being, mm -hmm. um, different experiences I have with them, how they react to things, the type of person they are on the inside makes them more beautiful to me than they were when I met them. Yeah. Um, and I think because of everything that is going on in our society and in our culture today, it seems like we've become more and more superficial. Mm -hmm. um, and we base a lot of our opinions and how we feel about things on just what we see right in front of us. It's just, you know, you meet people or you talk to people or you're looking at Instagram or you're looking at Facebook and you you see this guy, he has no shirt on, he looks like he goes to the gym every five minutes and you're like, oh my God, he's beautiful. Or you see this girl and she's in a bathing suit and she got her ass out and she got titties out and she got long hair and whatever and you're like, oh my God, she's beautiful. And, and it's like, that is the thing. And... Yeah. That is what that is what's gonna make that person. And then sometimes you meet people like that look like this, and you realize that's not at, like they just got ten times uglier than absolutely. You know, because their attitude sucks, or they're mean, or they're cold, or they're stuck up, or their ego just got way too big yeah. <laughs> for the room, and. It's one of those things where you really have to look at yourself and say, what what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Like internally, how am I allowing myself 
to judge people and see beauty and identify the type of people like what their worth is to me based on what I'm seeing right in front of me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think to your point when we are bombarded with this type of like imagery uh, Facebook Instagram you know wherever Twitter uh, you get to see a lot of I, I call it fake life right and some of these people that you're seeing Instagram models I'm not saying all Instagram models, but some of these people had surgery. And so you're beating yourself up. Mm -hmm. you're, you're stressing yourself out to do these things. And I have to say, guys and girls, we make it worse because what happens is you see somebody on Instagram, a very beautiful person. You don't know them by from A, right? But they're beautiful, post nice pictures. Mm -hmm. Have two, three, four, ten thousand likes on that, on that post. So automatically to you, like, that has to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because everyone else thinks so, especially when they get into the triple digits. I'm talking six digits, like a hundred and something thousand likes. You're like, I want people to like me too. Is that the way I should get people to like me? Well, this is what the instead of having it in the magazines now or on TV as much, it's on your phone where we spend a lot of our time. Mm -hmm. You know, some people that's the first thing they do when they wake up. It's, and that's the first thing you see. And if you already have low self-esteem, one of the things I will say is when it comes to beauty, as long as you know you're beautiful, right? Uh, I think when you're younger, you're told if you're beautiful or not. And then kids are cool. So kids can pick on you, they can point things out mm -hmm. about you that make you feel self-conscious. And so as you get older, it doesn't go anywhere. It, it literally enhances because now you're older, you're thinking about it more because like, well, I know as a kid, I wasn't too happy with that. And as I got older, did it get worse? Um, or now I like, you know, and I like somebody. And it's that experience again that yeah. like we talked about in the beginning. It's like, yeah. what are you learning as you grow up? Like, what is, what is the culture in that moment teaching you? Right. You know, is it, you know, if you got made fun of something, or, excuse me, if somebody made fun of you as a child for something specific, as you get older, you're going to pay attention to that. You're going to want to change that. That's going to be an issue for you. That can be an insecurity for you. Or I'll just go to a doctor and change it. Or, you know, it's, or I'm going to find a way to cover it up. Or whatever it is, um, we tend to find a way to compensate for whatever these things are that we're dealing with. And, you know, we talked we talk a little bit earlier about how we associate those things, smells and you know, just vibes or things people say, a tone of voice, all those things can become familiar and comfortable and, you know, kind of correspond with how we identify what's comfortable and beautiful to us. Mm -hmm. So if we find something that we like on somebody else and we say, oh, I know that's beautiful. Well, guess what? I'm going to try to do that for myself because that's going to make me feel better. Yeah. I mean, to your point, identifying beauty, you know, I, we say things or words are beautiful too, right? You know what I mean by that? Certain names are beautiful. Oh, that's a beautiful name. And if I had the name Teresa, that's my mom's name. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful name. How can a name be beautiful? You associate it with the person. Mm -hmm. And then that person associated with a look or a smell or whatever. Or the opposite. Have you ever met somebody that like knew somebody that hated them? Oh yeah. You're automatically ugly. And as soon as you hear that name, you're like, oh no. <sighs> Never again. Not that again. I'm not, I'm not ever dating a person with a name ever again. <laughs> yeah, and, and, but it's a real, it's like, it's, it's like engineering. It's like, mm -hmm. you're, we you're easily associate you. things, names, smells, experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, if this looks like it did before, and before I thought it was beautiful and yeah. it wasn't, I thought it was comfortable and it wasn't, I thought it was safe and it wasn't. So I'm not going back over there. Yeah. Um, one thing I, one thing I want to really bring up in this whole conversation is beauty is really, and it sounds corny, is in the eye of the beholder. Um, wherever you determine what beautiful is, especially within yourself, hold on to that because the world will tell you a lot of things. Some of it you would think, oh yeah, that's truth because everyone else believes that, but you're not everyone else. Whatever is beautiful to you, what's important to you please hold on to that because you know beauty comes in all different shades sizes you know backgrounds beauty is beauty regardless whatever you want to call it i can look at something or someone's not my type 
Mm-hmm. Right? Doesn't mean that you're ugly, because someone out there can say, that's the most beautiful person in the world. Mm-hmm. But to me, I'm like, I'm not my type. That doesn't mean they're not beautiful. It, it just mean means beautiful. they're not, not my type. They're not your type. And who am I? I'm just one person. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that being said, if you value my opinion, that could hit a little different. Yeah, definitely. You know? And um, that's why I was talking about that study earlier because different cultures see different things. Mm-hmm. Because by the culture, you're raised to think and see and observe your perspective of things, even how you're taught to see things. Like, yeah. you know, that's okay, this is not okay. That person is safe, this person is not. You know, how, how you become comfortable with that determines how you see something as beautiful. Yeah. And I guess the, the point of it ended up, just like you said, being that trust yourself. You know, it's not always about the superficial things of saying, like, is this person beautiful? Because, you know, this says that, you know, a girl who's thick or a girl who's dark skin or a girl who's light skin or got good hair, whatever that is. Um, That's the thing. We didn't talk about that. The good hair thing. I didn't. I was like, you could do a whole. Oh, we, we probably should and would at some point. Hair. Oh, my God. Yeah, good hair. There's that no such beautiful. thing as good hair, bad hair. There's no There's such damaged thing. hair. Yes. Yeah, damaged hair. Um, There's different textures. Different textures, different colors, different whatever. But it's no such thing of good or bad hair. Like I hear it all the time. Hey, you got really good. You got good hair. I'm like, why would you say I have good hair? Because you have waves. I'm like. That's it's the a texture. Good grade of hair. It's a good grade of hair. What? What's the? What's the good grade? I just have wavy, curly hair, and that doesn't mean that it's a good grade. It's just, and it might not be awesome for everybody. Right. Like some people walk around dying for straight hair. Right. Or curly hair. Or. Listen. Whatever. Listen. Having waves is great. Some people care. Some people don't. It's just the texture of your hair. And you can have waves and your hair is damaged. You can have pretty locks in your hair, but your ends are split. Your hair is damaged. It's falling out in places, but you just cover it over. You see those. Oh, yeah. So, over, so <laughs> get the, the weaves. You know, and it's getting out of hand with the hair with beauty too, because now guys are getting oh, installs. Wow. What do they call them? Like, it was a weaves quickly. What are you guys getting out? They're gluing. When I seen the dude get it's glued called. stuff on his head, like they didn't put a cap on it. It's, it's to his skin. It, it, it does have a little cap. No, this guy put straight up glue on his head. It's called a unit. A unit. Going way too far. You could go on YouTube and find it. It's Let it go. Actually, if you've never seen it before, if you've never seen a guy get a unit glued on his head, you should go to YouTube. And they're cutting it. Like they're fading it in, shaping it up. Let's not go into detail. You're gonna break it. But what I'm saying You're is. You're gonna break the mold we'll, and mess it up for everybody. Don't we'll, do that. We'll, we'll talk about it on a different show and we'll just. It's break called the unit. Saying. Google it. Beauty YouTube is getting it. out of hand. Um, <laughs> it's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. Guys are getting weaves now. Oh um, God. It's like, a, it's like a wig weave for and a guy. And beards. They get in fake beards. Get the little use the spray stuff. They get some beer. They get the, the, the it, fiber it, spray. You know, we got the now we got the the tattooed eyebrows and um, yeah, it's just all kinds of cool stuff. If you call it cool, but what I'm saying, what that means? It was that? a joke. I'm, <laughs> and I'm not. Don't, don't oh. get it twisted. Look, I don't want anybody to think that I'm against. Fake hair, fake nails. Obviously, my nails are done. So I'm not against any of that stuff. What I'm saying is, you do what makes you feel good for you. Yes. Um, I'm not ashamed, but it's not for me. But if you want to get your hair done, you want to get a weave, you want to get a unit, you do you. And, and nah, don't listen, guys. Don't. However. Don't do that, guys. I don't want anybody. All jokes aside. I don't ever want somebody to feel like this is necessary for me to feel okay about myself. Right. Um, there are things that I think we do to feel better. 
there are things that we do to I think hide is a bad word but it is that's what it is that, that we do things to like hide certain features or accentuate other features and if, if that's what you have to do to feel good about yourself fine everybody's not perfect and everybody likes to feel good about themselves and that's okay um the point here was to know yourself well enough to know that it doesn't have to be the superficial everybody has to have all these checks in the block to identify somebody as attractive um and walk around shaming everybody who doesn't fit that bill right let it go it's, Guys, not, it's just not that serious like I'm we're all not we're not one size fits all let it go there's somebody for everybody there's always somebody that's going to think somebody is beautiful and attractive and amazing and it isn't this cookie cutter like this is what it is and if you don't fit in here you don't go you may not ever have a hairline forever be okay with that just cut it off listen if you ever see me go completely bald you already know time it is you, my hair starts falling out is it thin nah my hair is nice and it's nice certain spots is probably thin maybe i don't know but I would say, like, if you, if I start getting, like, all this is going away and it's had the sides, it got to go. It has to go. Why? I'm not getting Just on unit. It. Oh, no, I'm not looking like George Jefferson. That coming, that's coming off, and I'm just going to go ahead so, and So, as a good example, you see what he said? He said, if this happens, this is something I'm going to do to make sure I feel okay about it. No, it's not about feeling okay about it. You, it's well, like, no, but what I'm saying is the natural, like... The natural scheme of things would be like it's either going to go here or it's going to go here. Yeah. And you're saying like once that starts to happen, it's going. Yeah, I'm not going to because I'm not going to sit here yeah. in the middle somewhere, and that's fine. Yeah. What I'm saying what is I'm, I'm saying not going to spend extra money. Like trying to and trying to that. trying to maintain a beauty standard. I'm like, look, so it's it's falling it's gone. out. It's gone. It's gone. I'm going to shave it so it just all be even. He's going with it, and I'm just going to go with it, like. And it's let's go okay. to the other side. Mine starts going. Amanda's not going with it. I'm going to find a way to keep my hair on my head. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. But no, in the event that it does. We already know it ahead of time. It's something's fine. happening. It's um, fine. It might be hat day every day. It might be a scarf day every day. It might be wigs. I don't know. Yeah. It's going to be something. I might get me a unit. I'm Stop just, blowing to your head, guys. It's kind of Don't weird, blow to your head. That's the glue is there to keep. Never mind. Anyway, with all that being said, hopefully you understand what we're getting at is that beauty comes in all different shades and array. We spend too much time on it. We spend too much money on it. If you think about the products, it's not even getting into like makeup. Yeah, makeup, nails, hair, arching eyebrows, bras, butt lift. Devices, hey, that's waist all trainers. Stuff. Guys do stuff. Guys, do weird stuff. guys have the waist trainers too. I've seen them waist trainers for guys. Guys do think they buy shirts to make them, it's like a shirt that pushes their muscles out or whatever. Like guys wear certain shoes to make them look taller. Um, it, it, it does. Like it's, it's, a, it's a thing, it's a self confidence booster for most people, and that's fine. But don't ever think that that makes you beautiful. That just gives you extra confidence for you. But I don't think that just says you're beautiful because of that. Um, we talked, I think we talked about this before, just between me and her, but makeup, I feel like if you wipe all your makeup off, if you're a completely different person, you kind of fell in a trap. You fell in a trap of beauty. like. Be who you are. Be okay with that. Don't pile so much makeup on your face that you take it away you. Have you seen that? Well, like, I'm talking about caked up. You, your, your makeup is very nice. You always have like a natural feel well, to Well, today, I don't have any on because... And see, so you would think you have makeup on your skin. Is yeah, today vibrant. I have on like lip gloss because... It's hot. It's hot as hell outside. <laughs> Say it. Because it is hellfire outside. Yeah. Satan's and I was in his car like, outside. Yes. And I was like, I'm going to get in the car. 
drive and I'm gonna melt oh, yeah. by the time I get anywhere. And if there was a whole bunch of makeup on my face, and I'll like, it's gonna like, if there was a whole bunch of makeup on my face, I would be smeared and it would be like, it would be bad. So I didn't. Um, but you don't. But I do know what you're talking. You don't about. pack it on to the point where it's like. No, Yo, I don't. Like but I do. I have seen where obviously you know I've done like fashion shows and things like that, and they always have makeup artists. And sometimes I literally see people come in the one way and put on makeup, and it's like a different human being, like somebody you would not even know. Like you'd be like, are you? But. But that's I mean, a one, false, that's a false sense of beauty. Big ups to the talent that's a, that can do that. That's a false sense of beauty, though. But it is. And I, and like I said before, I, I'm all for it. Like, you feeling good about yourself. Yeah. Um, but I also think there's a fine line between, like, what what is beautiful and what you feel like you have to do to make yourself beautiful. Right. Because if, if it means that you have to, like, take six hours to get ready for something because you got to put in that much work, that's towing the line of, like, uh, maybe you need to do some, like, internal work. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, the, and I think the biggest takeaway from all this was just, like, internally and externally, how we see the world and how we see ourselves is, is it's just not necessary. <laughs> To go through all that, it's, not it's, that just, deep. It's, it's more about just being a good person yeah. and doing the right thing, and sometimes that shines through a little bit brighter and shows your beauty more than all the other stuff. Yeah. So, with that being said, ladies, it's okay. You don't have to have. Anymore. Um. Don't end it with us. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, because guys are I said, out there I was gonna say guys too. Pieces. I was gonna say guys too. But ladies, it's okay. You don't have to hide who you are. If you have to put on makeup every time you go out the house to go to the store or to go to the mailbox, understand you're beautiful regardless. Guys. <sighs> let me let me tack on one for the ladies. Though. Okay. This is totally my own personal thing if you get up in the morning prior to your man getting up in the morning every day and he has never seen your real face that's cheating oh that's cheating man that's not fair i would dump water on you while you sleep just to see who you really are i'm i'm telling right now that's, that's a, a little problem. It's a problem. You might want to wash your face. You don't want to leave the house because it's raining? That's a problem. You know what though? They have makeup these days that's like bulletproof. Oh. Huh? They got makeup these days. You go outside in a hurricane and you can make it. But I mean, I, I do know women that for real get up every day before their man to like, they, like their man can legit say, I've never seen her real face before. Like I've never seen her without makeup. That's a problem. That is such a problem. That's a huge problem. That's, like yeah. you should be able to be confident enough in who you are to share who you are with the person that you love. Like the real version of who you are. Um, and if you're not, that's like an internal thing that has to be worked on really because that's that's, that's a it's a struggle to look like that yeah that's true well with that being said too guys i understand we as we get older things change too it's okay don't worry about it and, and you know you guys they are shit eyebrows too listen i seen clean doing the manscape that's fine but don't take it too far I understand that we are who we are Embrace who you are. Be kind to one another. When you see someone, don't they're beautiful. Just call them beautiful. Don't say you're beautiful for blank. Say you're a beautiful person. I appreciate you. Acknowledge that part and move on. Don't make it awkward or weird. You shouldn't even get your eyebrows. I don't. These are my natural eyebrows. And my and this is a real beard, by the way. 
Somebody asked me, was this fake? There's no Beijing in there. No Beijing. You can tell I got green in this. So there's no Beijing, Beijing whatsoever in this beer. But love yourself. Love everything about you, flaws and all. Um, and we're at the end of the show. Thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all. Make sure you go follow us on Facebook at Morning Coffee and on Instagram at Morning Coffee. And go ahead and subscribe right down here below. We appreciate you. Leave your comments as well. You can follow me on Instagram at P. Hakeem. And me at Unmatched, Unapologetic. It has some weird like letters, numbers. So just, yeah. Down here. As always. We appreciate you. Until next time.